called to order the uh, Wednesday, January 11th, 2023 public hearing for the City of Tampa's Architectural Review Commission to, uh, to work. Welcome everyone. I'm Susan Klaus Smith. I am the chair of the commission and I am also an architect. If you're here to present a project, you will have limited time to make your presentations, so we suggest being thorough but concise. When coming to the microphone, you will need to identify yourself and your relationship to the project. The commissioners will not ask any questions during your presentation, and your project should be presented in the following order. The site plan, the elevations, architectural details, and wall sections. The staff will then present the staff report, and then we will ask for public comment. Following your presentation, the commissioners will begin be, will be asking questions in the same order as the presentation. When coming to the microphone, please state and spell your name clearly if you are here to speak for or against a project. Your time will be limited to three minutes, so take some time now to summarize your comments because three minutes goes by very quickly. Following the public comment, the applicant will have five minutes for rebuttal. The public hearing will then be closed and the only comments which will be allowed after the public hearing is closed will be in response to any questions from the commissioners. The commissioners will then discuss the case and will make their decision based on the city ordinance, chapter 27 of the city zoning code, the design guidelines, the secretary of interior standards, historic preservation development review or HPDRC comments, and the testimony given at the public hearing. Please remember that the ARC can only act on items that are within our specific jurisdictional responsibility and owner agents are independently responsible to obtain any appropriate permits and or approvals. Now, if you haven't already done so, please do silence your phones, and I'll ask my fellow commissioners to, to introduce themselves beginning on my right. I'm Brent Taylor, and I'm a building contractor. Dan Myers, I'm an architect. Good evening, my name is Stephen Sutton. I am a registered architect. I also hold the architectural historian chair for this commission. I'm John Prokop, and I practice architecture. And tonight we have staff with us, um, Alexis Guzman, Ron Vila and our legal team tonight is Kamaria pettis mackle and Dana Crosby Collier. We'll go ahead. Good evening. Yep. Uh, Kamaria pettis mackle from the city attorney's office. Will the um, commissioners please state whether or not they have any conflicts of interest regarding any of the items that are listed on the agenda? None. 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 Thank you. Additionally, will the commissioners please state whether or not they've had any ex parte communications regarding any of the items that are on the agenda? Okay. None. None. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Ron Vila. I'm staff with Historic Preservation. Under continuations, we have one that's reflected on the agenda, and we're going to need a motion for it. That's for ARC 22 362. It's for the address of 2303 North Jefferson Street. The request was for new construction, single family residential with site improvements. The uh, continuation was requested by the agent to February 6, 2023 at 5.30 p.m. Can I motion, please? I move to continue uh, ARC 22-362 at 2303 North Jefferson Street to the public hearing on February 6, 2023 at 5.30 p.m. I second the motion. All in favor, please state aye and indicate someone raising your hand. Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. At this time, we're ready for the swearing. Ms. Guzman will swear everybody in. Everybody that wishes to testify this evening, stand up and raise your right hand, please. We're ready for the first case this evening, which is ARC 23-22. This is for the address of 1708 West Richardson Place. This is in the Hyde Park Historic District. The primary structure dates back to 1919, which is a contributing structure. There is a non-contributing accessory structure that's one story that is currently there. Uh, they are, the agent's gonna request for the demolition and that is a, a function that staff can handle. The use is residential. The zoning attached to the uh, request this evening is RS-60. The request is for a certificate of appropriateness for a one-story accessory structure with site improvements. Uh, as I go through the photo presentation, I'll show the, the location 
uh, and the proximity to Bayshore Avenue. Uh, this falls within the FEMA boundaries, so there's some criteria that must be met as the design comes forward. FEMA's regulations, if it's a one-story structure and it's less than 600 square foot, it can move forward as long as it meets the, the zoning setbacks. As part of the FEMA requirements, the, the materials have to be uh, FEMA approved and that they have to put in some hydrostatic vents that you'll see in the drawings this evening. So that is a requirement from FEMA. I'm going to quickly go through the photo presentation. Property in question is highlighted in the green parcel. You see the irregular shape uh, lot that's there. They are not asking for any variances. This is just for a certificate of appropriateness. The primary facade faces Richardson. To the east, you have Rome. To the south, you have Bayshore. And you see the proximity from Bayshore to the property. And that's why FEMA is interacting with this project. And to the west, you have Gumby. There is no alley attached to this parcel. From above, just focusing on the, the site itself, you have the primary structure. And there is a detached accessory structure right now, currently there. Uh, it is a, a CMU building. And as I stated, they're going to request demolition and come up forward for a replacement. This is the primary facade of the contributing structure. Looking from the street down the Puerto Cachere. In front of that car, you have the view of the location of the accessory structure currently. And just looking at what's currently there. Going back to the primary structure, you see I have the front elevation and then the side elevation, which is the east. You see the multiple uh, roof lines that are there. And then you continue around to the rear elevation, and you see the multiple roof lines that are associated there. This is the uh, existing structure, and you see the uh, elevation to the uh, interior lot. And just to complete the photo presentation, this is the rear yard. You see they have some challenges there with water um, absorption there and then the accessory structure. That concludes the photo presentation, and the owner will address the board at this time. Uh, good afternoon. My name is James McGuire. I'm the owner of the property at 1708 West Richardson Place. Um, as Mr. Vila indicated, we are um, intending to demolish the accessory structure, the one-car garage that's there right now. It's quite small. You can't even fit a car into it. Um, this is the site plan. Thank you. Yeah, so this is the... Uh, uh, the site plan, you'll see the, the accessory structure is going to go right here. Uh, it's going to be 463 square feet. It's slightly larger than the, the current structure that there, that's there, making it a little bit wider primarily so that we can fit a car into it. Um, in terms of the, the uh, neighboring properties, it's, we've got a five feet um, uh, space on, on the, I guess that's the west side and um, three to five on the south side. It's a little bit at an angle there. Um, so that's, that's the site plan. These are the um, elevations. It's moving. Okay, so you can see the, the front elevation here. Um, the garage door, as we've planned it, is slightly off center because as the driveway comes down to the back of the property, it, it turns a little bit in, in order to even fit a car back there. Um, so that's why we kept the, the uh, garage door slightly to the side there. The other reason is we intend um, you know, to have some storage space in the garage and that, that area to the left of the garage door would be for storage and a workbench and so forth. Um, and I would note as well, uh, you may have some questions about uh, the, the windows and so forth. The window on the east side of the building, which is facing interior to our property, uh, we have a horizontal window rather than a vertical window. 
uh, largely because we do want to have a workbench here, and if we have a, a vertical window, you know, it will go down below the work surface of the bench, and we think that that's, you know, potentially uh, not only unattractive, but a little bit dangerous. Have as well the um, the wall sections. Um, I don't know the level of detail you need me to go into on these. I will just uh, state that I, I think they're compliant with everything I've been asked to do. We we did make some, and actually I, I should mention on on I'm sorry on the elevation. This is a slightly revised version of, of what we had submitted on December 21st. Um, we added uh, corner boards. I was asked to do that um, and added trim around the, the side door and the garage door to make those more consistent with the main structure. Again, the, the wall sections. Um, this one, uh, Again, some minor variations from the last time. The, the soffit was, was aluminum last time, the soffit vent. It's now been changed to hardy. The, the entire structure is going to be covered in, in hardy board rather than wood. Um, again, I, I'm not an architect, so I don't know exactly what you need to hear from me on all that, but the, those, are the, those are the wall sections. Um, Um, so for, for that uh, doorway into the um, garage, I, I did want to just uh, show you two things first. We, we have a large number of doors in our house, and, and they are of all different types. This is, this is the um, door on the side porch of our house. You can see the single pane of, of glass like that. This is the door on uh, our, the back of our house leading out to the deck. And so, you know, we wanted to try to, as much as possible, uh, do something consistent with those. So we're proposing a door something like this um, for, the, uh, for the side door in the garage. It's, it's a wood door um, with the, you know, the panes of, of uh, glass up above, not, not uh, full glass, uh, but very consistent, I think, with the door that's leading out to the deck of our house. Um, also for that uh, vertical window, our horizontal window that I mentioned, we have a couple of places on our house. Sorry, if you give me one second here. If you look at the, the main structure, you see, for example, up on the very top here, we have a window that's not that's not vertical, that's horizontal. We also have a small square window on the front of the house. And so we think that, uh, you know, the window we're proposing uh, for the, the garage, which would be something like this, is consistent with, with what's going on with the rest of the house. And again, would allow us to have a workspace underneath rather than having a, a uh, vertical window there. Um, we, uh, we are going to have uh, lighting by the side door. We were proposing um, something like, like this for the outdoor lighting. Uh, again, we're you know, open to whatever uh, is appropriate, but we thought that went with the sort of uh, character of the rest of the house for the, for the hardware on the doors. We were going to propose um, something along these lines. This, we actually have this hardware on other doors in our house, including exterior doors. And uh, finally, that's an image of the a garage door, it's Banco, and that's drawn obviously into the elevation as well. Um, so that's, uh, I, I think that's all I have to say at this point. I appreciate your time, and obviously we'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We'll move on to the staff report. Afternoon, Commissioners. Ron Vila, staff with Historic Preservation. Staff's finding that this application is consistent with the Hyde Park design guidelines. Uh, we reviewed the plans on November 15, 2022. We've been at this for a little while. Um, 
the conditions attached to your staff report on page three. First of all, that uh, to meet FEMA regulations, that hardy is an acceptable material as he moves forward. Through the elevations, you saw that there were incorporation of vents on three of the elevations. As we go through this process, it's kind of a learning application for, for preservation staff as well. I think that the garage door is gonna to have to have some hydrostatic vents in it as well, but we'll let uh, the building department comment on that. What he was presented so far meets the criteria. Uh, there is no fencing, additional fencing that is um, requested this evening. We asked for him to put the introduction of the corner boards. On the thin uh, approved hardy siding that comes forward, if you try to miter it or weave it, it kind of pulls away from the corners. So the corner boards are an instrumental part of the success long term. Uh, the gable end was one of the details that I wanted if he was gonna put it in there to, to blow it up so it would be seen tonight. It's, all, it's such a small structure. I don't know if a gable van is required, but I'll leave that up to the board for discussion. Uh, he did address the, the dimension of the window. That's a little foreign to the district, but uh, the, the use of the workbench underneath might accommodate that. Uh, the other uh, bullet item was the uh, soffit vent was aluminum to begin with. He has changed that to hardy, which is something that we've approved in the past. And then going down the list, I believe he addressed all the other items. So that completes my portion of this presentation, and I'll be here to answer any questions. Thank you, Ron. We'll go ahead and open it to public comment. If anybody would like to come forward, seeing no one, we'll go ahead and move on to um, commissioners asking questions, and I'll start on my right tonight. <laughs> The first question I've got is <clears throat> on your trim boards. I understand it's going to be hardy or something like hardy. Yes. Uh, are you thinking five quarter depth or four quarter depth? And to clarify, five quarter would be truly one inch thick. Mm -hmm. The other one's going to be three quarter thick. The reason I'm asking is the thicker one is going to give you a better shatter line. You know, to be frank with you on, on those sorts of things, if there's one that's preferred, we're glad to do that. Okay. We don't have, you know, I'm not fighting for the minutiae on this I understand. Um, the next question I got is actually referring to the door. You mm -hmm. showed us a wood door. Mm -hmm. The rest of the building is going to be hardy, hardy and, and, you know, products that are going to withstand the test of the environment or, mm -hmm. or the, the elements, I should say. Have you looked at other options on the doors? Will it truly be a wood door? The reason I'm asking is just to clarify that because obviously a wood door in this environment may or may not last. Sure. I, I mean, as I was looking at doors, I know there are steel doors and other options. If, if, you know, if one of those is highly preferable, we, you know, we like the wood door. We think it, it looks nice. Um, but again, if, if, if these things are going to make or break, we're willing to make changes in those areas. You, I, you, the reason I'm asking is just so you give, sure. tell us what you're wanting to do. Yeah, we, we want to do the wood and, and to be frank with you, my, my wife would really prefer that, that rather than that door I showed you, we had a, had the one with the single large pane of glass. I can't find one in wood like that. So she doesn't know I'm telling you, I'm <laughs> the image I'm showing you. Um, so I, uh, th that's what we're intending to go for. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she, she's not watching. <laughs> uh, but in any event, I, I, I understand what you're saying. We'd, we'd prefer the wood, but again, if it's anything like this that's make it or break it, obviously we're, we're willing to do what we need to do. Most doors that you can find in a wood, you can find in a fiberglass okay. and vice versa. That is something we can discuss as a board, but I'm asking the question because I want to hear your preference sure. to give us some point of discussion here. Yeah, and my preference is the wood, but, but fiberglass, I think if we could get something that, that looked fairly natural, we, that would be fine. Okay. My next question is kind of out of curiosity on these vents. I'm not sure how much research has been done here, and this may be a question for you and or staff. Um, a lot of these vents are, you know, not very pretty to the eye. Um, I don't know off the top of my head if there's something out there that's more historically correct that would suffice to meet the FEMA requirement or not, so I don't know if, if staff can tell us that or not the three vents that were submitted meets the criteria as far as the different designs that are out there 
the options we haven't explored. We're just cutting our teeth on this now. Yeah. This is the first one that's coming through. In the upcoming months, we're gonna have a two-story structure that has a little bit more meat to it than, than a one-story. So there, it's gonna be a little bit more involved and it's a little uh, disconnect from our guidelines that we have now. But uh, if you just wanna put a condition on that, that work with staff to have something that's a little bit more amenable, that could be a condition. On the siding that you're showing, are you planning for it to go all the way down to the ground? Is there going to be a reveal on the foundation? Uh, hadn't planned, had it, had it planned to go all the way down to the okay. ground, yes. I'm not sure you told us about your roof material. Uh, I mean, it's shingled Shingle. roof, yes. And I'll ask this, uh, some of the architects up here will probably expound a little more on it, but as far as the windows go, um, has there been any thought to adding some windows on, I mean, looking at the layout, I'm not even sure if an additional window on one side or the back, or it would make it look better, but I'm not sure you can see it. Yeah, so the, the west side and the south side, you can't see. That They're almost like little alleyways to get into for us because there's there's tall fences from our neighbors all around, so you, there's, you can't see those. The east side, which is where I showed you with the one window, um, you know, we, we're trying to obviously be consistent with the architecture of, of the area, but we're also trying not to spend money. We don't have to, so we didn't plan in two windows, but again, you know, as I said, we're, we're willing to, to do what we need to do. We think the one window is sufficient. It's, it's similar to what's there and has been there for 50 or 60 years. Um, and it's, we also think that window is consistent with some of the other windows on the main structure. Okay, so going on to that window there, I mean, that window that you showed us is one that you, you know, it's, it's used a lot in new construction. Um, there are ways to make that window a little more historically correct. Uh, what's your plan there as far as setting it in the wall? I mean, I noticed it was a, like a two by four framed wall, which limits what you can do as far as your seal depth. Mm -hmm. So what's your plans there? Uh, honestly, I, I'm not sure I can answer that question okay. for you. Um, you know, we, as I mentioned, my wife is a little bit more concerned about this window than I am. And we would like to find something that, that, has the look and feel of an older building. That's what we're going for. I was struggling to find something, you know, that, that had that look, uh, but, you know, certainly glad to, to work with Mr. Vila and see if we can figure out something that, that looks better there. Absolutely. Okay. I think that's all I have for now. Mr. Myers. Um, and I'm assuming that the, the smooth hardy that you're gonna use on the exterior the exposure or the width, the visual, you know, what we can see of that, of that piece of siding is going to be similar or match that that's on your house, right? Well, that, that's an interesting question. When I spoke to Mr. Vila, he suggested maybe something slightly different so it didn't directly mimic. So we have five inch exposure on the house. I know there's a six inch exposure in the Hardy, so we're thinking something like that just to be a little bit different. Okay. And you or it was in the staff report that there is that you have a, uh, a moisture problem in your backyard is that we we have had a little bit of water build up in the backyard but we just had uh drains put in and a pump put in the backyard so that the water is now pumped out our, our the land runs you know uh, uh, down, down from the roof from the road Bayshore. yeah on top of that we've had quite a bit of construction of enormous houses around us mm -hmm. and every time that happens it seems like they somehow tilt their land and more of it runs our way but we we've had a problem with that but we we put the um the, the drainage system in just before the hurricane in september and it worked like a charm and kept it dry so it seems i mean that's that would have been as bad as we'd ever gotten it and, mm -hmm. and that it did a good job there but what this suggests and and this depends on the confidence that you place. And this, this is sort of outside of the, our purview. I'm just making this a quick suggestion here. Um, if you're really confident of your draining, drainage system and that, you're, you know, that you've got a pump and it's always going to have electricity and you know, all right. these things, right. um, otherwise you want to be a little bit careful about, let's say, that water built up in your backyard. It seems that your house is quite a bit raised from the, from the finished floor of the garage. 
So you've been asked to have these, these uh, hydrostatic vents, yes. which, which will allow the, any kind of flood water to pass through your garage. Um, it's also going to, it means that you're, you're assuming that there's going to be quite a bit of water there, and we're discussing whether the, what material to use for your doors. Mm -hmm. Well, the wood is, it, the wood will be less happy if it's soaked for several that, days well, than the, that, the fiberglass. A good, that's a right? great point. That's a and you point. just, you know, you can paint the fiberglass, and I think that we can probably stand that. Uh, is that correct, Mr. Vila? A painted fiberglass uh, garage door would be acceptable as long as it looked like a wood, wood door? For new construction, it is an alternative. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I've had enough things rot away in, in, the, in the Florida <laughs> weather. So, yes, I, that's, that's a point well taken and, and is a very good reason to, to consider the aluminum. And, and it also means that you want to perhaps terminate your, you want to think about a stem wall, okay. right, before you bring that wood all the way down to the, to the ground, right? Even hardy board. Yes. And, okay, that's all that I have to say. Thank you. Mr. Set. I have a few questions, but I have a few questions myself, and I'm going to go right back to the, uh, the concept of the doors uh, in terms of the materiality. Um, my fellow commissioners point out that even though that this is a very modest structure, uh, exposed wood doors to the weather is a nightmare. I have that in my house and it's, it's a monumental pain. <coughs> On another property, believe it or not, we have just recently installed <coughs> a series of uh, fiberglass doors that absolutely meet your aesthetic criteria. Large upper light, painted bottom, painted, it looks like a million bucks. And under your circumstances, I think it's material that you might want to very seriously consider um, for the durability and for the maintainability. That's the last thing I'm sure you're going to want to do after this is built is to have to revisit it on a regular basis because something else has to get fixed, painted, or replaced. Well, Matt, I appreciate, now, appreciate um, those comments. Between uh, your presented documents and photographic evidence of your site, I noted that there was an existing fence at one point uh, currently mm -hmm. that kind of like divides your driveway between the house and the uh, garage. Right. Is that fence going to be replaced in any particular kind or nature at this time, or is that going to disappear? It, it's not going to disappear because there's a, there's a tiny bit of fencing probably four or five feet from the back of our deck to the garage. Mm -hmm. We're going to lose a couple of those feet. We'll still have a deck there because we have a dog. I mean, a fence there because we have a dog. But we're just going to continue with the same fence that's already there. Then, sir, please, could you please bring up your site plan and indicate to us how and where you're planning on running a fence and terminating? So I've just drawn in the back here, I guess it doesn't, it doesn't it'll go on. sure. Just drawn this little line right here. That, that's where the current fence is. It basically runs uh, from the back of the deck to um, the garage itself. Since, okay, so it is indicated. Yeah, yeah, so the current garage comes back, you know, starts back a little bit further. It's a little bit less shallower than this one. So the, the fence will be about two to three feet shorter than it currently is. And you're planning on modifying that existing fence? Or are you planning on a new one? Uh, we were just planning on, uh, frankly, taking off that portion. It's just, it, it's a fence where it's just um, nailed up boards, uh, you know, so it can, it, it's not. So you're modifying hands. an existing yes. fence, no addition, no changes, no, no. no nothing. Okay, fine. Uh, also on this site plan, please Sorry. leave it up again. Um, 
I understand uh, the driveway. I understand uh, how it slides past your existing single family residence. What are you doing, if anything, uh, to the pad, if you will, the driveway pad at uh, the front of your proposed garage? Is this new construction or uh, how are you dovetailing that into your existing driveway? Well, I, I guess um, the, the current garage, the, the driveway slants down and there is a slight uh, concrete uh, ramp, if you will, mm -hmm. about a foot, a foot and a half deep. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be coming forward, but there's still that slant there, so I think we'd have to have that same, the driveway would have to have a slight ramp into mm -hmm. the garage. But you're not planning on replacing that uh, driveway portion, that apron, I call it an apron? Um, that's a great question. Um, well, in order to extend the, the foundation of the building, we are going to have to eliminate a little bit of that. Yeah, so we'll be eliminating that elevate that, that ramp that's there, essentially just moving it two feet forward. Okay, so in other words, you're not planning on, so basically what I'm looking at here is the profile of the existing apron. You're making a surgical cut for a new construction. It's not like you're taking whole sections out and no, replacing no. them. Very good. So we don't have anything to worry about texture matching of existing uh, materials or anything else of that no, nature. It's just a concrete driveway. Okay. Uh, the horizontal window you have, mm -hmm. um, is that operable? Does it, is it the, meant to be a slider? The one that's open? currently in there? No, the one you're planning on using. The, it, it is. Um, it, it's a sliding do, uh, window. Again, <laughs> you know, my wife is telling me I don't want that. I want just a simple window that that doesn't have that function, but, but trying to find them is difficult. There's casement windows, but we don't really want a casement. Well, if you, you know, I was thinking that, you know, one of the things that you pointed out in part of your presentation, um, and I think that may be fitting for this, hmm. is on the attic elevation for your front elevation, you have these pairs of, uh, of square, small windows in a frame, an A, B, A, B, A sort of an arrangement. Perhaps maybe you want to think of instead of having using something like that as an arrangement for your horizontal windows. Okay. You don't have to have them divided. They could be you know plain clear clear glass uh, fixed windows for the both units ganged together in the wall, and that way you can bring a piece of, of the front of your house to the the side of your garage, and it looks like it's part of the same package to a certain degree. Yeah. Again the. That's, that's something we're, we're certainly open to. If, uh, if that's what you need, I'll, I'll convince my wife. So. <laughs> I, wa I want you to have what works for you. I, I understand that. And we want it to be consistent with the house. We're not trying to do anything mm -hmm. unusual. And, and now, my, my fellow commissioner also made a, a, a note uh, on the placement of the window itself uh, within the wall. Uh, our older structures have the windows pushed almost backed or into the interior face of the of, of, of the structure, leaving that deep shadow line. Now you do have a two by four frame, and typically it's a fin type window that goes onto the sheathing. If you use a block type window, one that would need grounds, you could take that window and push it back to the interior face of, of, your, of, of your garage leaving that nice deep shadow line, or a deeper shadow line on the exterior, much like all the windows you have on your existing dwelling. Uh, that sounds, you know, uh, I, I had never, these are things I've not considered, but yes, that sounds like something that we would be amenable to doing. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Prokop. Um, <clears throat> most of the most of the questions that I might have have been touched upon. Um, I do want to reiterate that I think taking that rectangular plain glass open window that you have and making it just two squared fixed picture windows side by side might be um, much more appropriate. And you'll get the same amount of glass, same amount of light, and they're picture windows. They don't have to operate and they don't need mullions. I think a pair would be nice. You could even put three in a row in. It might be nice. Um, I've done the hydrostatic vents in historic properties. There's very few that 
are historically beautiful or, <laughs> or appropriate. They are what they are. Right. Um, so I mean, I mean, you you're gonna get what you what you're gonna get probably what with those. Um, the difference in the the siding exposure from five to six, you get very good advice on that. That's that's the right thing to do. Um, and it would be um, it would definitely be more appropriate for those fin those windows to not be fin type windows. That, you know, if you're going to either do the horizontal one or a couple of squares, and the fin type window is what it is. It's a part of the window that just slides down in the front of the framing, mm -hmm. and that's how it's installed. A non-fin type window is uh, is better to push back and get the shadow line. And um, but otherwise, um, yeah, it's a simple project. You're doing the right thing. I also don't think you really have to worry about, uh, you know, if, if, and I don't know if you've consulted with, with anybody, but you don't really have to worry about venting an attic in, in this type of right, construction. It's going to be an open space largely, so. Yeah. But, so I'm not concerned about a gable vent at all, personally. That's about it. So I have just a few questions. If you could put the uh, wall section detail sheet up that you had before. <clears throat> I just want to look at some of those. We really didn't um, touch on any of those. Yeah, there's, there's two of these. So, so on the first one, This one. So are you working with a builder currently or are these from a builder, a contractor? Sure, yeah, from a draftsman. Yeah. A draftsman. Um, I just wanted to confirm it looks like the, the entire soffit area is all enclosed. You're not going to see rafter tails or anything like that, correct? Right. Okay. And then for the uh, fascia board, do you have an understanding of what the material is, how it's going to be closed off? I, I assume it's all hardy because you said it was all hardy. I understand there's hardy for, for that as well. That was my, our intention. And then for the profile, do you have, do you know that dimensional um, number for the profile? I'm, I'm I sorry, see. I don't. No. And then the, the um, overhang from the wall to the end of the tail, the, the fascia board, do you know that dimension? I think the overhang is, is one foot. One if foot? Not, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> and then you said you had contemplated taking the siding to grade correct and that there wasn't any consideration at this time for any type of detail at the end of the siding it would just be siding all the way down well as it was suggested to me that might not be the best idea so we're certainly contemplating uh, it yes. okay um and then if we could ron if we could zoom back out on this page i just want to make sure there's anything else here i want to look at in some detail thank you <clears throat> Can we go to the second page? Because this looks like framing details. Please, thank you. Um, can we zoom in on the upper left corner, please? There seem to be some details up there. Again, those are just framing. Yep. All right, well. I think that's it for me as well. Um, I appreciate everything you've been able to tell us today. And I think um, there being no other questions, we'll okay. go ahead and you have five minutes for rebuttal. Yeah, one more. I'm sorry. Yeah, I want to add. It just go came ahead. up. You go brought ahead, up go ahead. The, other, the other sheet that had wall sections on it. Um, your draftsman is clearly, you know, didn't design this for a, uh, for a flood area. I mean, he's, it's, it's not part of his purview, so to speak. But where those, if you could put up the other wall section that has the actual wall frame on it, that's good in the bottom right there. Um, 
he's got the studs coming all the way down to the slab and then you're venting through that wall for flood purposes. And I, this is not a question, it's more a practical detail in that instead of bringing the studs all the way down past where the flood relief needs to be, um, is to actually build a concrete curb okay. and put the flood vent in a concrete curb and then have the stud come down on top of that and that way you won't have wood rotting. If the water does get through the garage, you won't have your wood studs rotting and all that kind of thing. Um, it's just a yeah, I mean, observation. These, yeah, these, I, I don't want it to, to rot or have problems, so I'm, I'm glad to hear those, those ideas. It has nothing to do with historic preservation or <laughs> ARC. I do want to say, though, it's historically accurate. I have a garage from 1938 there you go. in it. And I agree with everything said. However, it is not under our purview to tell you how to design. <laughs> understood, that's, understood. that's where uh, either a structural engineer or an architect and or a builder should come into play and make sure that you're getting the correct drawings. Because I agree. <laughs> These are pretty generic. Yeah, so. and, and, and I had a question. There's now a follow-up question. But it was, have you thought about using a masonry product, a block, in lieu of wood framed. I mean, wood framed is historically correct, and I, I get all that, but the block, thickness of the block wall, as well as it being block, may alleviate some of these other questions that we've got regarding window shadow lines and different things of that nature as well. So, again, it's just pretty obvious that this plan you know, I get they, they probably realize that it's going to a floodplain, but it's not really drawn for that. And um, again, my fellow commissioners may get on to me for asking about block, but I'm just asking just so again, as we go into discussion, we kind of know everything to discuss here. Right. Uh, is it something we had considered? No, it is not. Um, I, I, I have no, uh, no idea of the difference in terms of the cost of one versus the other, uh, you know, from our perspective, we've had this concrete block square sitting in our backyard forever. We, we think what we're going to replace it with is going to be a lot nicer and a lot more appropriate for the neighborhood. So, but we also, you know, don't want to invest everything we've got in, in, in a one garage. I think garage. some of our line of questioning here is actually more out of concern than it is sure. what we're actually here for. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the curb is a great idea, but it, you know. No one in seeing what we saw, I realize you've put in a new drainage system. Mm -hmm. Again, you lose power, unfortunately, unless you've got a generator. That no longer works. The way this is built, if it's built on grade, basically if you get three, four inches of, of water standing in your backyard, now you've got water going through wood. Typically, this type of construction is only going to have pressure treated at the ground level. From there up, it's just wood. Mm -hmm. On top of that, all your trim boards, all your drywall, everything's going to be soaking wet. And unfortunately, fiberglass insulation, which is also in these walls, wicks water. Um, so it just is going to create quite a few issues for you down the road. So that, there, there probably needs to be some, some additional thoughts there. Uh, now, how you attack it and how you resolve it, obviously, that's up to you. What we're here to do is, is to approve something that looks like we want it to look in the neighborhood so right. no again i you know i appreciate those those concerns i don't want to be in the position of rebuilding my garage in 10 years so i certainly don't want to, have to do this again <laughs> um any additional questions for the applicant you have rebuttal time which is five minutes th th there's nothing i really feel like i need to rebut i will just mention it's totally irrelevant to this, but when we sent out our notifications to the neighbors, I learned that Andre Vasilevsky, the goalie for the Bolts, lives around the corner from me, and my daughter was really hoping he would show up tonight to, <laughs> to, to oppose our project, but I don't see him here, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, no, thank you for your time, and thank you for the, 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 the suggestions, which I, I, I take in the spirit in which they're given. Thank you, sir. We'll go ahead and close the public portion of the hearing and discuss the case.
I agree with everything that has been said tonight. However, <laughs> from the ARC's perspective. No, I think the only thing I really have an issue with is, is the, is from an arc, from an ARC standpoint, is the horizontal window that was shown to be a slider, operable slider window, because that's what was presented. And I think that would be inappropriate. And if, if anything, though, if it's going to stay a rectangle, it could be a fixed picture window or a couple of squares side by side, I think is even more appropriate. Um, otherwise, I really, they, you know, they, there's... I don't have any other problems. I, I agree, and I think in terms of whether or not there should be more openings, certainly you can add a window at each elevation, but the um, garage doors also have lights at the top. Right. So, and the idea that it would be a workshop, we would imagine that the garage doors would be open on a great day, right? So. And also those, those uh, small windows can very easily be made casements. If they wanted, if, if they wanted you, them operable. Yeah, if you <laughs> wanted an operable window, you could get the exact right. same look by putting in a casement. They don't want them operable. Yeah, yeah they, they can be easily awning. Awning. But knowing how I use my workbenches, my workbenches are full of everything that you can imagine, and I never open the windows. I have a window on every wall. <laughs> the garage doors are always open when we're in there working. So. What about the eave depths? I mean, that is a 12-inch eave, and I, mean, I realize it's an accessory structure is why I'm asking. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, it's a small, modest little building. I think it's, it's entirely appropriate to scale. It's one yeah. Yeah. At two stories, I'd be concerned. At one story, I'm not as concerned. Yeah. Now, one thing, I, one thing I am a little bit concerned about, and you did bring up uh, the point, is uh, the nature of the trim pieces, the trim boards, whether it be around the doors, windows, corners, and all that sort of Yes. I think one of the things that they might need to do is to make a coordination with staff on that uh, because the deeper sections, the thicker sections for these would give a bigger shadow line to the structure. Right. And it's not so much uh, to the benefit of the structure itself, although that would be there. And I'm thinking it would be more in keeping to those deep shadow lines that we have on the existing dwelling. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to see five quarter. I mean, a, a, a two by four would give you more, but given the circumstances of where this particular building sits, mm -hmm. I think a five quarter would be sufficient. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree. Because yeah. that hardy board, can, you know, for the siding itself, can get really quite thin. Yes. Can get really quite thin. That's the only thing I would think of, of, of adding on this thing. Uh, because, you know, the hydrostatic vents, I agree, uh, they are what they are. I mean, I wish we had great choices for the matter. Yeah. The problem is, is they do have to be NOAA, you know, they have no to work. meet they the building code, oh, so. Yeah. Yeah. And they tend to, you know, if it's FEMA related, they tend not to concern themselves with historic <laughs> no. appearances. I mean, you know, treat them like a cat door and paint them to match the siding. I think we're, yeah. we're as far as ahead of the game as we can get. Exactly. Yeah. All right, um, so I think there are a few things we talked about that uh, perhaps, um, we would want to consider as conditions. One was the um, three and a half or five and a half hardy trim at the casing. Mm -hmm. And then. With the final selection of the doors, the vents, the doors, the window, and the trim. And then we need details on the windows and doors on, for their installation. For their the installation. Property. Yeah. Okay. I agree. I think that's that's the nothing order. else to add to that. Okay. Uh, move to grant a certificate of appropriateness for drawings and documents presented at this public hearing in ARC 23-22 for the property located at 1708 West Richardson Avenue with the following place. Sorry. Oh, Richard, Richardson Place with the following conditions: that the applicant shall coordinate the selection, the final selection for vents, doors, window, and trim with staff, and also present and coordinate with staff the details for the installation of the doors and the windows and the trim. Because based upon the finding of fact, the proposed project is consistent with the Hyde Park design guidelines of the city of Tampa for the following reasons. It is consistent with materials and materials, scale, and uh, 
location within the for accessory buildings within the historic district. I have a second, please. Uh, I second. And sir, before we vote, um, do you understand the condition? You can come forward. Um, you understand the conditions that were set forth with the motion here tonight? I believe so, yes. Okay. All in favor, please state aye and raise your hand, indicating so. Aye. 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 Motion carries 5 0. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good luck it. with the wife. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Vila. Appreciate all your help. Commissioners, good evening. Ron Vila, staff with Historic Preservation. The next case is ARC 23-60. This is for the address of 833 South Newport Avenue. This is also in the Hyde Park Historic District. The primary structure was constructed in 1913 and is contributing. The zoning is RS60. The request when it initially came in was they had two variances attached to it. The backup reduction from 24 foot to 16 foot and a rear yard setback reduction from three foot to zero foot with a zero foot encroachment for eaves and gutters. When him developing this project, that second variance has been removed. There is no dimensional uh, variance request this evening. The only variance request is for the backup reduction from 24 to 16. Uh, I had advised the applicant that he's going to address the variance first. You could discuss the variance. I do have John Marsh with transportation here. He wants to enter some things into the record uh, when the time is right. If you look on page three of the staff report, there has been some previous action. In 2000, excuse me, in 1993, the BOA, which is the Board of Adjustments, approved for the reduction for the front yard to 10 foot the rear yard to zero, and the side yard to zero. And in, in, in uh, 1993, there was a one-story structure, accessory structure that was built. I'll show you that through my photo presentation. So there's already a one-story accessory structure that's there. The access from the alley for the vehicular access is at 16 foot, and that's why he's asking for the reduction as an existing condition, which will be apparent through the, uh, through the photos. In 2014, this, this owner here that's coming forward had asked for a variance for the rear yard reduction from three foot to zero, as he was requesting this evening, but he has modified that. Uh, that has been granted. We do have the drawings from that hearing, if you want to see it, and that received an approval from four to zero, uh, in approval for the rear yard reduction, and the addition for the second story accessory structure as it's being presented this evening. Hopefully with that introduction and the uh, photos, I could clear it up for you. And if you have any questions, obviously I'll be here. The property in question is highlighted in the green parcel. It does face Newport. To the north, you have Inman. To the south, you have Morrison. And continuing to the south, you see Bayshore Boulevard. There is an existing 16-foot alley in place. And that's how he comes into the structure and he leaves. There also is a garage door in the front from the primary street, but it's a through a garage at this point. In, in, in 1990, excuse me, in 1929, there was an accessory structure that is indicated on the Sanborn that has been removed. And through the aerial, you see this is Newport. This is the, the subject parcel, the primary structure and the detached accessory structure as it sits today. You see the, the gable roof. This is looking down the drive aisle from the primary street. You see the garage in the background. You see the proximity to the property line, how close it is to the neighbors. That was approved through the prior variance. This is looking at the garage door off the alley. This is a 16-foot alley. Just wanted to point out as well, there's no cladding. When this came forward and it was approved, Two of the elevations have wood siding on it. It's the, the, the elevation that faces the primary street and in the, the interior yard. The two other elevations, the elevation that faces the alley and the elevation that abuts the neighbor are exposed CMU. So that's part of the staff report. What is he gonna do as he comes forward? This is looking at the accessory structure from the internal. You see the pavers here. So this is how they access it from the primary street. You see the cladding here um, is appropriate. This is the cladding 
that's currently there uh, on the interior side. Just want to show you this is a non-contributing structure. The, the host structure is made out of CMU. This is the separation to the abutting property line. CMU on the alley, CMU on the abutting property line. No overhangs. Just to give you a point of reference, this is the high-end Tudor-style home at 833 Newport. Looking at the structure again. And following through from the front elevation and the north, this is the vehicular access, excuse me, and you see the accessory structure in the background. This is the rear elevation. And to complete the rear, this is the existing accessory structure. There's a little bit of room between the primary and the uh, outdoor uh, patio, if you will, and then the pool area. That concludes the photo presentation. Uh, they're here if you need them for clarification. This time I'm gonna have the air owner come forward uh, to address the variance. The variance uh, questions are attached to your staff report. They're in the back and you can follow along. Good evening, my name is Gregory Carney and I'm the owner of 833 South Newport Avenue. Um, as uh, Mr. Vila uh, introduced, the first order of business would be to discuss the variance uh, in regards to the alley. This is the site plan. And we see this is the, this is the house. This is the existing structure with the proposed second story that we'll be discussing. And over here is the alley. The alley right now is 16 feet. When I bought the house in 2014, that's how it was. The structure existed, the alley was 16 feet. Um, we do access the alley for our primary coming and going. And uh, we've gotten very good at negotiating that very small space. This is a picture of the alley. This is our garage. We have backup mirrors on both sides and I'll show another picture showing the other backup mirror. Uh, this is the extent of the alley. There is a telephone pole right here. So there's really no way to, for the alley to get any, any wider. This is, our, this is the, um, the structure that exists on the property line. You can see our neighbors uh, also have an, an accessory structure that does the same thing. And then this is our back neighbor's fence. This is the other side of our garage also showing that we have a second uh, backup mirror. So again, this is uh, something that we came into. We didn't create this, this issue and we were originally, I guess the, uh, the property was originally uh, granted a variance to build in this way. So we're just asking to have a 16 foot instead of a 24 foot back out. I speak quickly. If you ever need me to slow down, please tell me. Um. Typically, we have the applicant and a variance go through their list to enter it into the record. Okay, from here, could you jump off the, the dimensional one? Just, yep. just what addresses the access. So originally, we had we were also thinking of putting the second story all the way <clears throat> to the edge of the existing building. Um, but after discussions with Mr. Beal, it was decided that it would just be simpler to modify the footprint of the second story to come in three feet from the existing structure so that we didn't need that variance. So now um, the, current, the current variance that we are asking for is for that uh, 24 foot to 16 foot um, for the uh, alleged hardships or practical difficulties. There's an existing alley and there's an existing structure. We'd like to keep both as is. Um, the hardship or practice does not result from actions of the applicant. All of those things existed when, uh, when we purchased the property and have been the same since. Um, it should not interfere with any uh, health, safety, or welfare of others as it's existed this way for uh, approximately 30 years now. Uh, it is in harmony with the general intern purpose of the, uh, of the chapter as, it was, as the variance was granted previously. Um, this, uh, the, whole, the whole point of our asking for the variance is so that we can capture the additional square footage that we're entitled to in our property. Um, and so in, in order for us to be able to do that, we would need the variance. So I do believe that uh, substantial justice would come through the granting of this variance. Um, 
and we certainly intend to stay uh, consistent with the design standards of uh, the ARC in Hyde Park in the second story. So this wouldn't would not alter any of those plans. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioners. Ron Vila. Uh, staff is silent on the variances. It's a finding of fact or the substantial competent evidence that has entered into the record. But would you have John Marsh with transportation that wants to enter some information into the record? Thank you. John Marsh, um, Transportation Engineering Division. Um, transportation objects um, on the uh, to uh, finding it inconsistent with Chapter 27283.12H 2B that as the applicants previously stated, the, the, the current code, the backup requirement is 24 feet, it's only 16 feet. Um, transportation concedes that this is an existing condition that was granted under previous code um, and that the current project does not change the operation of people entering or exiting the garage. However, our interpretation was that by adding the additional space, he's increasing a nonconformity under the current code and therefore he would need the um, he would need this waiver in order to make it correct under the code um, the the, the uh, garages on the um, on the light line on the lot line especially on this alley has been a really hot topic that we've enforced on the other locations so in order for this to go forward I believe it needs the variance thank you mr. Marsh So we'll ask questions. Are there any questions for the applicant at this time? Oh, I'm so sorry. So uh, right now we will open it to public comment. If there's anyone else here who'd like to speak for or against, seeing no one, we will move on to the commissioners asking questions of the applicant. Anyone with any questions regarding the variance request before us to either the applicant or staff? Do you have a site plan you could show us? Yes, yes sir. So just to orient, here is the alley, and this is the existing building, and this is the proposed second story. So I would like to hear, I guess, the answer to if, if you had to move this building to the 24-foot rather than, what, the 16 you're asking for? Mm -hmm. uh, does, does that place a, a, a hardship, if you will, on you? It, it, would, it, would, it would kill the project. I, 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 we're not interested in raising the building and, and constructing it from scratch. Okay. That's all I've got. I have a question for staff. Preservation or for transportation? Um, well, Actually, it concerns the previous action in, t in 2014. Okay. So this was approved in, 20, in 2014, the addition the, of a second story to this. The, foot, the footprint of the one-story structure was approved in 1993. Okay. In 2014, this applicant came forward with a very similar request to add a second story with, with the second story shifted all the way to the back, that needed a variance for it. Mm -hmm. So today he's removing that dimensional variance for the second story. But, but, it but it was already approved, but it was approved without the dimensional variance in 2014. And, I, and my question is, is just an informational question. If you don't build, if you don't, you know, if you don't build and you have a variance in place, does that variance go away? A variance and a certificate of appropriateness runs for five years from the date of the approval. So 14 and five year at 19, so it goes beyond what the code allows. So that's why he's back again. Okay. And <clears throat> he's asking for a, he's not asking for the dimensional variance at three feet. It was advertised, but he, str he struck it from his presentation this and evening. The, okay, and there's nobody here. He, it was advertised with that three foot, with or without, 
without pushing the second story back three feet. It was advertised to zero. At and zero. No, and nobody's here tonight. And, and nobody knows the difference except for the people that are here in, in the viewing audience. Right. And <clears throat> why is it that staff is suggesting that we cannot do a variance, do two variances on this project? You, you can do a variance, but when staff consults with the applicants moving forward, we ask for them to come forward with the least amount of variances possible. Can this project move forward without the variance? And through different iterations, it can come forward without one of the variances. The other one's a given, it's a constant, it's there. You know, he's just kind of cleaning up the record, right. for lack of better words. The applicant has removed the request from tonight's hearing for the dimensional setback for the rear. We as a board cannot then go and say, let's put that back into the motion, can we? Kamaria Pettisnackle from the legal department, no, because the applicant has withdrawn that portion of the, 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 the application this evening. Thank you for the clarification. And while you're still standing around, I, I, I gotta go back to the 1993 ruling that says to reduce the front yard set back to 10 foot, the rear yard set back to zero, and the side yard set back to zero, and that was granted. So why is there now a three foot setback in place? It's coming years later, it's coming 30 years later. He has the ability to construct what he wants with removing one of the variances, the dimensional variance. So in consultation with us, as I stated, uh, if you could, if your project could come forward without the variance request, that's what we try to but the applicants. But the rear yard was already to zero. It is, for, for one story. So the one story is there and it's built. When he okay, adds a second the, story. The, that's, that's what I'm asking for, the 93 ruling, the reduction of 10 foot, rear foot to zero, and side yard to zero was granted with conditions that it only be for a one story building? I, I wasn't there and this is the language that we have in our database. So this is what I'm going with. So the one story footprint of the building, they never did anything in the front yard. There is no reduction in the front yard to right. 10. So the two that are, are pertinent this evening is the rear yard to zero, which the garage door is almost to zero. The, the construction is to zero, the garage door is set in slightly, right. you know, six inches. And then I showed through my pictures the abutting property, you saw that there was no overhang to that side because the body of the building is to right. zero, so it comes straight down. Right. So that was constructed, that was granted and constructed in, in 1993. But the rear yard setback does not hold at zero it does in for, perpetuity. It does for the footprint that was presented in that site plan and the elevations. That was a one-story structure. There's okay. a vertical that's, plane that's, that's, that's going up. to be clear. It, it, it pertains solely to the structure that was built at the time. That's correct. Okay. I have no question. Any other questions? I've got a quick question. Mr. Taylor. Yep. I've got a quick question for transportation. Just to clarify and make sure I heard you right, transportation is for or against? We're we, we have to object because it's an expansion. You made a comment that this had been a hot we're trying, topic. We're trying to be consistent. That's what Understood. <clears throat> so you made a comment that this had been a hot topic on this particular alley. In this, well, uh, I'm not sure if it's exactly this alley, but we've had a number of other locations where in Hyde Park where people have, because the, these, these garages have been like this forever, and then they want to build a new garage and then we're enforcing the 24 foot setback according to the current code. Are these other garages that are in question multiple stories like this one? Some of them are, yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? None? You have some time for rebuttal if you'd like to respond to anything or add anything? No, I don't think I have anything to add. Okay, we'll go ahead and close the hearing and we'll discuss the case. If 
I may, I'd like to address my fellow commissioners' uh, conundrum with respect to the existing zoning ordinances and the, um, uh, the variance granted to the original structure. You know, granted, that is a chunk of history, that if you were going, it doesn't matter you know, what the history or the fabric is, you make an addition of any kind, horizontally or vertically, and that is not conforming, then that, that too has to have the variances involved. That's proof for that. Okay. Okay. So in this case, the the the, the, the applicant has has because of the way he's designed his second floor addition, which we hopefully will see, um, that no longer is an item for play. Right. Um, really, I have no uh, uh, objection. Uh, to this variance, it is an existing condition, and this is what the variance type situations are made for. Uh, uh, conditions that are brought to us by uh, that existing condition and its existing conflicts with everything else around it. Um, it's a given, I think. So, uh, I think, uh, personally, I think I'm going to proceed. Any other comments? My only concern kind of goes back to my line of questioning of. of precedence and I realize it's an existing condition which is unfortunate right now but there is no one here to speak against or for for that matter but maybe they're all wanting the same thing so uh, that it's just just food for thought you know it's just kind of with my, my, my head is right now is is are we opening the floodgates potentially Well, I feel that this, it is a different matter when someone is um, making an addition and they are not, you know, he is, he's not asking for that three, in, three foot, you know, that three additional feet. So he's going to be within, within, the, uh, within the code for the three foot on the second floor. And he has this existing building which is non-conforming, but he's not making, the only thing he's changing is the, you know, the second floor of it and it's back. People who, are tr who will, of course, want to build an, a brand new structure will have to deal with the, you know, with the code as it, you know, as it is. For the backup is. distance. Yeah, for the backup distance. Another thing I want to point out is that in the variance, the first, the first statement is related to a unique condition on that particular property and, and the question of whether or not we're opening up the floodgates we've, we've kind of discussed this before I think in some other variance requests is that each individual property is a unique property when we consider variances that's the way we're supposed to approach them and so to think that we're we're setting some sort of precedent that will let everybody build a new garage with their garage door at zero zero yeah. feet lot is not what we're doing here and I, I i think that needs to be stated very emphatically and clearly we're not saying that we're changing an ordinance that allows you to do that what we're what we're saying is that we agree it's a unique condition to this property and this owner is not stating i want to continue to build I want to build an additional garage door opening at the same distance. If he came to us and said today, I need a third car space, he, he could come here and say, well, I built the, this was built this way, and so it's, it's, a, it's a grandfathered condition. Sure, but that new garage door opening, I doubt that any of us would agree that he could put it at zero lot, right? I think we would all agree that you're, you've done this to yourself, you decided you needed a new thing and it needs to be compliant, right, with us and with the codes and the ordinances in the city. So um, I think that's a, a big point of fact that we all need to be mindful of when we're talking about the zoning, the variance request. Any other thoughts, questions? Yes. So basically, you know what you're saying is that is the, 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 the proposed variance for this uh, backup space is really more of a corrective action as opposed to a permission. 
that's how I see it. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's how it's seen legally, but that's how I understand it. Would you like to open up? Would you like to ask legal staff to clarify that point? Because we have to open up the hearing if you do. No. No? <laughs> what was your question? Oh, it wasn't a question. I thought you wanted to react to something that was said. No, here. did you have a question? No, I do not. Okay, okay. okay. He was asking me. I, I was asking you. Yes. Okay. Just as a point of discussion. I didn't, I'm asking what's the, what was the question so I can understand what it was. Oh, okay. We were just discussing whether or not, um, if you want to restate it, you can. Your comment to me. Or we could just move on. Or we could oh, just I, move on. Let us, let us move on. Okay. <laughs> we ready for a motion? I am. Yeah. Who would like to entertain a motion then? I'll go ahead. Um, move that the variance request for ARC 23-60 for the property located at 833 South Newport Avenue be granted as depicted on the site, as depicted on the site plan presented at the public hearing for a backup reduction from 24 feet to 16 feet based upon the petitioner meeting the burden of proof with regard to the six hardship criteria set forth in section 27-114D of the City of Tampa Code of Ordinances for granting variances as stated and the evidence provided in this public hearing, specifically that the granting of the variance allows a historic condition to remain in place. Here we second. I will second that motion. All in favor, please state aye and raise your hand indicating so. Aye. 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 Was, that, was that a five? Okay, it was you. It carries five to zero. Congratulations. So we'll move on to the uh, certificate of appropriateness portion. So thank you for the variation. Um, so so uh, as we've discussed, uh, the, the point of the variation was to then try to um, get a certificate of appropriateness for a second story addition to the existing garage. Um, the point of the, of the second story is, as I alluded to before, is to capture that extra approximately 260 square feet to which we're entitled that we otherwise wouldn't be able to, to utilize. You know, these, these, uh, the amount of property in Hyde Park is relatively small, so we want to try to maximize what we've got. Um, so the idea is to use the existing uh, structure. It is concrete block construction, uh, uh, built in 1993. Seems like it's in very good shape, can support a second story. Um, we've worked with uh, Mr. Bielet to try to come up with a floor plan that is, uh, is um, uh, conforming, including the three-foot setback, um, and is consistent with, the, with uh, both our house and Hyde Park. So let's see, back to our floor plan. And sorry, our site plan. Again, this is the existing structure. This is the, um, the footprint of the proposed second story with stairs going up the, the one side uh, to a door that would allow access. These are elevations and uh, the wall structure. So here we see this would be uh, this would be looking from the house towards the garage in the second uh, the second story structure, which would be this. Here are the stairs that are going up to it. The garage door exists, and uh, the um, at this time there is a wood siding on this facade of the of the existing structure this is the south facing side it also has existing uh wood siding we have a staircase going up here very simple staircase i can show a more detailed drawing of it later an example of uh, another in the neighborhood but again very simple uh, leading to a door um, we plan on using hardy board siding on the second story structure and cladding it on all four sides despite the fact that the alley side of the garage and um, as we discussed the side, the north side that faces my neighbor's um, property, both of those are just concrete block which has been painted, but um, at least the um, alley side of the garage which we see here below the, the second story structure, we would plan to clad in hardy board both top and bottom. So this area right here currently is just exposed concrete block with paint over it, but we would clad down. Um, we would try to we would try to match the hardy board to the existing wood siding on the main house. Uh, same with the roof, we would want to use asphalt shingles, which is uh, which is uh, what is currently on the house, and uh, the 
the existing garage. This part of the garage wouldn't be altered. So this would be the existing roof with the existing shingles, existing garage door, and we'd like to keep that all as is. Um, over here we have the, the wall section, and I've blown that up a little bit because I personally wasn't able to read it uh, just on that on that, um, that one sheet, so I wanted to make it a little bit bigger for you. This is a little bit more detail um, from, a, from, uh, from the plans that, again, show the staircase. Again, simple. This is an example of a staircase that's similar to what we're thinking of doing. In terms of additional finishes, uh, doors and windows would be to match the uh, current house and the current, the current uh, windows and doors on the garage. Um, this would be uh, really our only light that, that we plan on having the exterior. We actually have these on the back of the house now on the porch, so it would just match what's already there. Um, for some reference, we did, um, as, as Mr. Vila said, we did have an approval for a second story structure back in 2014. We also at the same time got an approval for an addition to the main house. We went through with the addition of the main house, and at that point we're sort of sick of construction and coffers were running low, so we decided to put this off. We didn't realize that it expired in five years, so that's why we're back at it, asking for it again. This is um, elevations from the original plan. You can see it's actually pretty similar. We actually had an additional storage room at that time that we're not asking for now. So this is the, this is the second story. This is the existing. This is the second story that was approved. Here's another rendering of the second story, which was approved over here. Um, for we know that the a lot of times the entire second floor is is occupied for uh, for a uh, over garage apartment or mother in law suite. Um, we'd love to do that, but we know that there's a 900 square foot total under roof restriction. So we were trying to stay within that. Um, we tried different configurations in terms of putting the second story in the middle or towards the edge. It actually looks better towards the edge. And I just wanted to use this as an, as an example. This was recently finished. Um, it's, it's at the end of our block at the corner of Inman and Newport. Um, and it was just finished in 2022. Uh, and this is, this is part of what inspired us to go with the offset design. And I think that's it. Thank you, sir. We'll have um, staff come up and read the report. Good evening, Commissioners. Ron Vila, staff with Historic Preservation. Staff's finding that this application is consistent with the Hyde Park design guidelines. Just to go over some of the numbers, the existing one-story accessory structure footprint is 640 square feet. He's adding approximately 260 square foot upstairs in the second floor to equal the 900 square foot that is allowed and he's entitled to under the RS-60 zoning classification. On the plans, I wanted him to indicate the setback from the second story. The one-story footprint has already been uh, approved as zero, has been built, has been CO'd. He is not increasing the nonconformity. I think that's the, the, the language that you were looking for to the garage. That nonconformity is existing. He's not modifying that. Uh, the final solution for the entire building, the cladding around the whole building, he has some wood siding. He has some C, uh, CMU exposed. He talked about introducing Hardy, so to gather a more developed program. The stairs, as he indicated, were not totally developed. I believe he has some examples of the stairs for the exterior. Um, maybe the introduction of some windows could be a discussion from this board. And if this project is to move forward, a design exception one is required. That is a zoning application that is made. That is an internal function that zoning and preservation looks at, and if he keeps the total height under 22 and a half foot, it's something that we relatively approve. Uh, that concludes my portion. I'll be here to answer any questions. Thank you, Ron. If there's anyone here for or against the project who would like to come forward at this time, seeing no one, we move on to the uh, commissioners asking questions, and I'll share my left this time. Mr. Prokop. Um, hi. Hi. Um, could you put the elevations back up, please? Yes, sir. And could you zoom in to, I guess, the side elevation that has the stairs? Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> okay. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out and notice that is, is that you, your main house has very um, prominent exposed rafter tails. Mm. Were you planning on exposing the rafter tails of this second floor addition? I was, I was not. Okay. Um, the window shapes and sizes, have you looked at something that, that looks a little more vertical proportions, window proportions, uh, again, to match the window proportions of the main house? Uh, we've looked at, at different permutations. I'm, I'm certainly open to a, a more vertical window. I'm not, certainly not set in stone in terms of the window shape. Okay. Um, you mentioned that you were also think you, you, you I think you, you started saying we're putting Hardy on all sides of the house. You can't install it on the side of the house that faces the other garage. There's just no room to install anything on that side. Correct? I'm sorry. On the Is there room on the side of the house that faces the adjacent property's garage to actually do? In, I, in I don't think anybody could get in. It's, it's, and I'm not exaggerating, it's under a foot. Um, right. I don't think that there's room for people to get in there to I, install the siding. I don't think there's any way to do it either. No, sir. I just, you just, it, during the presentation, I think you mentioned you were going to wrap all, all four sides. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so the, the, the. But it'd just be the three. Yeah, the south side and the east side are currently, currently have wood. Um, the plan was that um, on below here to put the, put, put the hardy board over the concrete block. We can extend it over here. This is a very small space. This is, this is just, I think, maybe one concrete block wide. So it's only a foot and then this narrow header. Um, that may also be a bit of a challenge in, in terms of putting hardy board. Certainly plan to put the hardy board uh, down on the alley side all the way to the ground at the large area of exposed concrete block. Um, the four walls that I was referring to is the second story. Okay. So all four walls of the, uh, extra walls uh, of the second story would be clad. Understood. Um, I, it, it would not be a problem really to run it across the, this alley face either. Okay. It, it, any contractor wouldn't charge you that much more at all to, to continue it across and down that little piece on the side. Okay. It's very little material. Um, I think those are the only questions I had at this time. Okay, thank you. Mr. Sutton? I have no question at this time. Mr. Myers? <clears throat> I guess my only question is that, that um, this is a relatively small room. I suspect that the only thing that you could do to make this even more commodious is to, uh, to take the roof off your garage and put a deck up there, but that's obviously not part of your thought process at this was, time. We, we had thought about it, um, and in one of, the one of the permutations of the design, we had moved the, the, the second story to the middle of the garage with the idea that, the, that, that would become, where, where the roof had been taken off would become a deck. We think it looks better like this, mm -hmm. uh, so that's why we, we eliminated the deck. Now, if you'd like to invoke powers to give us an entire second story, I'll take it. That would give us a lot more room. I'd be happy to do that, but we feel like this is the, the best configuration for the uh, limited space that we have. Okay, very good. Um, I also feel like uh, perhaps the window, uh, let's see, the window's facing your house. Mm -hmm. um, you could reconsider their, their dimension. I don't know. Do you have roughly square windows on your existing home? Yeah, I think they're more vertical than square. Um, so they might, they might want to, uh, it might be good to have them be that more it vertical. I have no further questions. Thank you. Oh, excuse me, one thing. Um, the section that you show us, uh, the second floor wall section yes. on the, that's on the overhead right now, um, is incorrect, right? Because you've, you're showing that it's, you're showing a wood wall with insulation in it, it seems. Um, well, it, and I know nothing about this. So oh, okay. I, I, if, you, if you're telling me it's wrong, I, I believe it, the, the first floor is concrete block. The second mm -hmm. floor is planning on being wood frame. Okay. So if this doesn't reflect there, I, I apologize. I don't know how to read these. 
Okay, and then the, then we also in, a, in our, our standard request is that you have the same shadow line that the window appears to be set into the wall somewhat, and we would also like to see that on this. Okay, and I'm sure that your existing house has that has a similar detail. So you just it, it you, could you just want to say I will make it look like my house. Yes, we'd, li we'd like to make it look like the house. We'd like it to be consistent with the house. Sure. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I have no questions. Um, so what is the pitch or the, the, the slope of your roof on the new? I don't know that either. Hopefully it, it's somewhere on the plans. Again, I don't, know how, I don't know how to read them, and I don't, I don't remember specifically being told. It's the numbers on the top. Zoom into the top of the elevation. Your large wall okay. section back up. Oh, there it is. Okay. Is that a five or three? Five and twelve. Like five. Is that a five or a three? Well, uh, I don't I think, think we can five. trust that. I think it's a five. That section. I think that's a generic section that well, just I, somebody I else cut and pasted three. there. It's they also are. at the top of the elevation. They're also on the elevations. Don't use the wall section. It's also on the top of the yeah. elevation. Yeah. The elevation, I think, are more accurate. Yeah, so yeah there we go. It's so it's a, a five and twelve, it yes. looks like. Okay. Um, so this is a good one too. Um, is it your intent to have this gable vent component at the top of the walls under the roof line? And, and I was asked about that as well. And again, this is you know I have I do have a uh, contractor that I'm working with, and this was um, this was drawn up by a draftman. This is really beyond my knowledge of the of the of that part of the plan. Um, so if that's something that we should have, happy to have it. If it's something you guys don't like, we can eliminate it. My, my question would be following the same line of an earlier question. Is it your intent to align more with the primary structure in terms of the aesthetics, the way it looks, so with or the, build on what the garage currently looks like? I think that in this instance, and in, in particularly the, the slope line, our primary house, part of the curb appeal, part of the, the aesthetic of the house is that it has very steep pitch. I think it's. I, I think that it would be too dramatic for the remainder of the existing building, and so we had discussed that. And that's. A, and even carrying through some of the uh, the architectural embellishments of the front facade of the house was considered. But because it's not actually going on the house, it's going on this accessory structure. We felt in keeping with the dimensions and theme of that structure makes more sense. So the style would be more in keeping with the current garage, yes, not the home. Um, okay. And then um, there is something wrong with this elevation, the way it's drawn. Okay. It is drawn as if the wall of the second story isn't in line with the wall of the first story, but we know that not to be true, right? So perhaps this was drawn before you removed your request for the three feet. That's drawn correctly. Yeah. But the elevation from the and, alley side is drawn and we did. incorrectly. Our, fir our first set of plans was to go all the way to the back of, yep. and um, again, in speaking with staff, it was recommended that fewer variations was better. As long as I got the square footage, that was fine with me. I discussed it with the builder who said that it wouldn't be uh, difficult to uh, support that, to support the structure, even though we weren't going to the external wall. So that's, that's correct. Our, our, our plans now reflect three, it coming in three feet. And I believe on the site plan, plan, it also reflects that if one of the elevations doesn't, that is our plan. Can you uh, put up the image of the garage? I think it was a blue structure that you had shown just a little bit ago towards the end of your presentation. The, I, I Another alley garage that you had. It's kind of a bluish. Can we zoom back we out? Can we zoom back out? That's changing there focus. There you go. <laughs> Eventually, I was going to figure out how to do this. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Then, can you put your elevation back up, your elevation sheet back up? Was that view of the existing garage, was that from the alley or from the interior driveway? The existing garage that I was using as an example was from the alley. Okay. So, um, if you just focus this so we can see it a little bit better, you don't have to zoom into anything. So, was there any consideration to introduce a window on the alley side of the second story? We, there was consideration. Um, we certainly want there to be enough light coming through, but at the same time, um, with the window on that side, it just looks out over the alley. So we didn't feel, we felt like it may be better to have additional wall space rather than to have an additional window there. Um, it, the plan is to use this as a most of the time gym and an occasional uh, guest uh, apartment. So uh, we do want to put in either a Murphy bed or some other uh, structure on one of the walls. So um, anyway, we had thought about it. We did, we decided that a solid wall on that side uh, made more sense. 
I believe the documentation says that you want a bathroom, that there is also to be a bathroom in this yes, area? Sir. Okay, and a bathroom, frequently, it, it's good to have a window. Yes, and, and um, I can show you the floor plan that reflects that. Oh, ah, okay. Okay, that makes more sense with the two windows because I didn't understand the two windows at the front facing the main primary. Um, mm -hmm. This is a very, very small space. Yes. Um, so I, I wanted to understand more about the doors and the windows. Did you show us a cut sheet for a door? I don't remember seeing that. I did not. Um, we were. So what is the intent for the door? The intent is to is to uh, keep keep it consistent with the existing door on the first floor. And uh, we did plan on using Sierra Pacific uh, windows for the as as the windows. So an opaque door with raised. Yes. Okay. And then the windows, what type of windows were they intended to be? The Sierra Pacific brand, uh, I think wood windows with uh, aluminum clad. And then are they operable? Um, that's a good question. I don't, I don't think we'd planned on them, on them being operable. I hadn't really considered it, but I don't think the plan was, due, was for them to be operable. Most of the windows on the main house Can are Can we go not. back to your floor plan again? Sure. Oh, please, I'm sorry. Um, considering that this will be living space, mm -hmm. I would assume that you're introducing some sort of AC, right? That's correct. What type of AC system? Planning on using a um, split, uh, mini split. Mini split, mm -hmm. okay. Is there any equipment that would be outboard in the interior of the dwelling then, and where would that be located? Yeah, it's, it's and, and, um, He has to. Yes, it would, be, it would be under the stairs leading up. Is that on the elevation? If not, can you just point out where that would be? Sure. It would go here. Under the stairs, okay. Yes. And then um, in terms of your existing fence, which I believe you have, That's correct? correct? Yes. Are there any renov or, uh, renovations, any um, modifications to that fence at all? There are not. Way? No new gate or anything like that's that that's going to be introduced? Okay. And then in terms of the stairs, I know that you showed us one image. Mm -hmm. Can you show that again? Because you, I think you showed it so quickly that sure. I couldn't tell exactly what was going on and what your intent was so by showing us that. The it, image, not this one, the photograph. Sure. So that, that's the rendering. And... This is roughly what... What we'd be planning, not the uh, not the additional, not this additional portion, but just the stairs and the landing. So, in, indeed, the style that is represented in this photograph is what you intend. Correct. With the top rail, the the uh, spindles all having um, an angled end piece to them as they come down and meet the bottom rail. Correct. And then opens well, not open stairs, the closed stairs, but the the uh, detail of the stair tread and riser would be similar to this. That's correct. As well as the runner, correct. The stringer. Okay, and then in terms of the posts and the beams around the landing platform, is the intent to detail it in this way as well? Yes, like I said, very simple on on this part. Okay. Sorry, I'm just taking some notes. Sure. Um, so we talked about that. Roofing material, I'm sorry, I forgot. Um, was it asphalt shingles? Correct. Okay. And then uh, assume that the landing of the stairs, that would be wood decking. That's and the what type? Yeah. Is, it, is it tight fitting or? That's a good question. Uh, Hadn't given it, uh, haven't, hadn't given that consideration. Um, I'm sure that we would want water to be able to flow through it, but. Uh, okay. Um, that is it for my questions. Any other questions? I have one question, sir, please. If you could refer back to your sheet of elevations. Mm -hmm. On the first floor level, where you show your stairs, you indicate two windows. 
Mm -hmm. Are those existing windows you yes, are sir. indicating? Yes, sir. So am I to assume that your squarish windows come from that example? Uh, that, you, yes. Now that you mention it, that is where the, the any, that's, that is where the square windows came from. Rather than matching the, the house, they were matching the existing windows on the garage. Thank you for reminding me. Thank you, sir. In keeping with that, can you can you show us the um, image of that side, your photograph, or was that mm -hmm. you, Ron, that had that image? You can't see them great, but you can see them. Ron, I think you had a better image of that elevation. I think you had a side view. Yes, thank you. That's where they come from. Yep. <laughs> I'm laughing because the fence is right in front of mine. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you. Very helpful. Um, I just want to point out, you, do you see how deep your windows look in this elevation? Yes. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about the inside of your windows and your doors, that okay. they should be more like that. We should match the inside. Right. Okay. To the extent possible. As much as you can. Frame walls are a little limiting because they're they're also not as wide as the eight inch right. box. So. Okay. All right. Any other questions for the applicant or staff? No. Um, just a quick question about your the, the ceiling that you would intend in the addition. Do you want that to be flat or do you want it to follow the line of the roof? I would like it to follow the line of the roof. I prefer a, a vaulted or a cathedral ceiling in general, I, especially in a small space like this. I feel like it would add to the feeling of space in it. So if possible, I'm gonna, I'm, I'd like to do a uh, vaulted or cathedral ceiling. Okay, so that means really that then the, uh, the gable vent goes away. So not needed. That makes sense. Thank you. And <laughs> or, or is aesthetic just applied? Yeah, but we don't. We're not going to ask that. In this, <laughs> we we will discuss the case. Okay, we'll this. Okay, well, <laughs> so all right. So you're you're going to do that, and okay, that yeah. concludes my question. I appreciate the, the leading question getting me to the right answer. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because your drawing does not show that. I'll just remind you about okay. that. Okay. Okay. Uh, one you. more thing. Um, did you show us hardware? I remember the lighting. Did you? Show I did us not. Hardware? I did not show hardware. Um, we would just keep it consistent with the with the other hardware that's existing on the, on the uh, on the building. On the garage. On the garage, correct. The existing accessory. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing no others, you have five minutes for rebuttal. None. Okay. Thank you. We'll go ahead and close this portion of the hearing, and we will discuss the case. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so I heard that the applicant was open to removing the gable vent, mm -hmm. was open to reconsidering the, the geometry of the windows. However, the applicant also clarified that he was trying to be more in tune with the existing accessory structure when it came from a stylistic rather than the main home. So we did confirm that the main home and the accessory structure have different window configuration sizes, etc. He couldn't match the angle of the existing house's big, you know, I he guess could. they're 12 and 12. He couldn't. No, he could not. Because as I soon agree. as he did, he would go over the his height limitation also. Well, I also don't think it's in oh, keeping with his statement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very odd. Yeah. <laughs> A little tiny, I, I'll, I'll say the photo he showed of the other house that had a garage facing the alley and had a little tiny rectangle window at the top. Yeah, That's you know. A, even though, it, and it would be high enough, you know, it would be a small, high window, it would, it would add to that elevation and not, not make that elevation as, as bland. I, but, I uh, agree. And, and I liked your question. It sounded like he was open to the, the rafter tails as well. The, I, I think the rafter tails, like I said, it's so prominent on the main house. It, it ties it's, it back to the it's house. It's kind of sure. odd that it that this wouldn't have some. But I mean, I, I know he's trying to match the design of the garage. Yeah, you know? the existing structure yeah. doesn't, so I'm okay I know. with that. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't push that, but 
But I do think having an additional opening at the alley side is appropriate. It's his, it's historically accurate. Um, Would that be a diamond window, or a, a, a you know a tilted square? No. 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 <laughs> you no, you don't want to do that. Okay. Where does that come from? Secret <laughs> <laughs> <Even> imagination. <laughs> Um, no, but I thought the, the elevation that he, that he presented as, as an example of what he was doing yes. showed a very small, it looked like maybe 12 inches wide, very small, delicate little window up towards the top of the gable, which does break up that, that well, elevation. Well, this, this missing, I mean, that rear elevation is, is missing a window or, or something for sure. Well, I think about I think about the experience of spaces, right? Even though it's not in our purview, but you know, just occupying and being in spaces like that, it's a tiny space. The more windows you put in, the bigger spaces feel. Um, and then the the other thing is that that's west facing. In the winter time, we get such gorgeous sunsets, and the sky is on fire half the time, and just that ability to enjoy that from even a guest a perspective tiny, or well, a homeowner to perspective. To that point, the, the two windows are in the bathroom, so those aren't going to help for, as far as lighting the main... There's one little window in the kitchen. Right, that's, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So it would, it would benefit. And the door also wasn't glazed. Isn't it glazed, proposing. correct. It's not glazed either. So it could use a little something. But, uh, you know, again, it's... But it's a suggest we can suggest that. But away from right. that, you know, the, the light aspect of it, the, the rear elevation just seems to be missing something in that rear wall. I agree. I think just the, even the fact that it stepped back three feet, it still seems to be screaming for something just from a historical perspective, in my opinion. Other than that, I don't have any other concerns. Anyone willing to entertain a motion or have another discussion point? So we have the doors and the window in terms of their final selection coordinating the staff. Doors including, and, their, including their hardware. Doors and window. He had specific doors and windows. He named them by manufacturer, and he said the windows were wood, aluminum clad, and that they would match the existing of the garage, of the accessory structure. Mm -hmm. But that information does not show up in the documentation. Well, yeah. Provide, he has to provide those cut sheets for sure. Mm -hmm. Along with the hardware. Yes. And then we want to make sure that uh, he does the uh, 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 inset for the windows and doors. In a more appropriate manner. In, in a more appropriate, appropriate manner. Yeah. The siding too, uh, that was a, a point of clarification that the siding at the rear alley facade could and should be extended completely across that facade, including the wing wall and the header of the doors, of the existing garage doors. Mm -hmm. And then what about the gable vent? The A or nay? Should Either we way. recommend? Well, I think I think it's clear that he, he agreed he really didn't want one because he wants to see Reconsider. One. Suggest reconsidering? Yes. And the inclusion of a window, a small window. At the alley side on the second floor. Yes. At the closer, close to the peak. Let him worry about where he puts it. Well, okay. Yeah. But of course our suggestion is that it should be close to the peak. Excuse me, um, Kamari pettis Mackle from the legal department. If the board is inclined to um, approve a motion granting the certificate of appropriateness, just a reminder, reminder that staff 
um, stated um, during their presentation that there's a pending design the exception. The DE1, yes, thank you. And that design exception again is for Anyone willing to entertain a motion at this time? Let me give a shot at this, please. Okay. I move to grant certificate of appropriateness for the drawings and documents presented at this public hearing in ARC 23-60 for the property located at 833 South Newport Avenue in the Hyde Park Historic District with the following conditions. One, subject to final approval of the design exception for the uh, addition's height the final doors, windows, and hardware are coordinated with staff. That the inset of windows and doors be reconsidered in a more appropriate manner. Siding at the rear alley side of the existing garage structure should be extended over the entire length of that elevation. And that the alley end the second floor window, uh, second floor addition, be provided with a window and coordinated with staff for proportion and placement. Because based upon the finding of fact, the proposed project is consistent with the, with the Hyde Park design guidelines of the City of Tampa for the following reasons: that the addition is consistent many elements of its existing um, uh, accessory structure and that the scale, massing, and form is consistent with examples known to be within the historic district of Hyde Park. And the scale and height and width of portions of the new addition are in keeping with the scale of the buildings and accessory structures on the subject property. I have a second. I second the motion. And sir, if you would come up, um, do you understand the conditions that were set forth in the motion tonight? I do. Okay. All in favor, please state aye and raise your hand indicating so. Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks for your consideration. Very welcome. And see you next month. We are adjourned. Mm -hmm.